Welcome back to the 2016 candidates debate. It is now time for our last group of candidates, the Board of Selectmen. With us tonight, we have all four candidates, Mr. Brendan Tedstone, Ms. Claire Wright, Mr. Michael Yumina, and Ms. Margie Wigan. Welcome to you all. Our format is simple. We will ask you a series of questions and you will have one minute to answer. If you hear the bell, you have 10 seconds left. After that segment, Michelle Murdoch will then ask eight yes or no questions. And then to close out the debate, each candidate will have one minute for a closing response. I have the first question for the Selectman candidates. Mr. Ted Stone will answer first. And the first question is, if elected, what are your top priorities? Well, if I'm elected Selectman, there are a few priorities. Um, we have the Charter Review Committee going on right now. So when, that's, when the Charter Review is completed, that's going to tell us a lot of what we can and what we can't do. So monitoring that, following that, seeing how that's going to happen. Um, another one is manage growth, making sure that the right places go in the right places. And um, really one of the bigger ones is, is trying to maintain and keep our tax rate as low as possible while not compromising the great services that we have. Okay, Ms. Wigan, same question. Okay, thank you. Um, I, my priorities, if I am to be on the Board of Selectmen, would be to maintain the charm, natural resources, and sense of community we have here. We've experienced incredible growth recently. So I would like to bring the new people into us and make sure that everyone feels a part of our community as a whole. I also would like to find uh, sources of revenue to increase the income that we have because clearly we have a challenge before us. I've heard in recent, the recent month several people talking about tightening our belts and um, I would like to find a way to bring the revenue in um, and manage the growth in, a, in an intelligent, um, thoughtful way so that we're not just bringing in new buildings without having um, sources of mitigation for any challenges we might have. Okay, Mr. Yumina. Uh, good evening. Um, I would like to talk just a little bit about um, some of the things I see going on in Hopkinton. I went to the town meeting and I know I got up to the mic probably more times than most people would have liked, but I had a lot of questions about things that go on in this town. And my main focus, I guess, has got to be on getting the most bang for the buck for this town, making it be more efficient, um, trying to prevent taxes from having to go any higher than they are. Um, and my thought about the town meetings is if you hold them on Saturday, and uh, start at noontime when most everybody's out of bed and you uh, uh, at about uh, five o'clock serve pizza for 20 minutes uh, you'll have the same result that I used to have when I was a scoutmaster for 20, for 12 years and that is if you feed them they will come and maybe we'll have a full town meeting uh, hall at that point in time so that was just a thought um, but I also believe that we need to get more revenue sources for this town. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Wright. Um, well, we certainly need to keep our, con our spending under control, our tax rates low. Um, we spent a lot of money recently, and, and that's going to be coming home to roost pretty soon. Um, part and parcel with that will, of course, be encouraging economic growth and keeping um, growth and uh, growth moving forward in a responsible manner. Um, I would just want to say on some specific initiatives, I think it's really high time that the Board of Selectmen um, took the traffic and parking issues that the town is experiencing, um, really grabbed hold of that, and implement some plans to start solving those problems. That's a key factor in our economic growth and in our quality of life. And I would also say I would like to find ways to um, improve the public input public connectivity with the board of health uh, with with the with the board of selectmen um, i think there's some work that could be done there and i think the public engagement uh, is an important role for the selectmen to um, to explore okay michelle has our second question miss wright will answer first okay so um 
According to the town charter, the Board of Selectmen is the town's chief policy-making agency. And I want to know, what does this mean to you? And, and bear in mind, I do understand that the charter is under revision, but we'll go with as it exists today. Um, please describe what you see as the board's responsibilities as compared to those of the town manager. Well, before the town charter and before we changed our form of government in, I believe it was 2006, we had a highly decentralized form of government. We had at one point only three people on the Board of Selectmen um, and much of the town's day-to-day -day operations were done by that part-time volunteer Board of Selectmen and an executive secretary. Um, our new form of government gives much broader responsibilities to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Board of Selectmen sets the policy initiatives for the town. It sets the budget priorities for the town. Um, it oversees the general operations of the town and sees that its objectives are carried out in the operations. But the town manager is more responsible for the day-to-day -day administrative duties of the town, um, to coordinate the activities of the boards and the agencies. Um, in a nutshell, when you look at Board of Selectmen, you think policy, you think oversight. When you look at the town manager, think administration. Okay, Mr. Yumina. Well, <clears throat> my take on that is somewhat similar to what you w might find in the military, where the uh, you know the officers of the or the uh, selectmen, the board of selectmen, take the part of the officers and the generals and the captains or whatever that uh, runs, and the sergeant is the guy who gets out there with the people involved, and he does the day-to-day nitty-gritty hard grunt work. And uh, I am really happy with the current town manager that we have. I've said it before and I'll say it again, uh, that I think he acts always in the best interest of the town. And I would like to see that continue. And I don't think that as a board we should step on his feet too much. And if you have ever talked to people who've been in the Army, I personally have not, but they'll tell you the sergeants know what's going on and they're the ones who uh, are, are in charge of what of getting things done and that's what I think the way it needs to, to be run I think it's pretty much run that way now um, and but I think it's important thank you okay miss Wigan thank you um, I am actually excited about the possibilities of helping set policy for the town in terms of listening to what the townspeople are in need of are concerned about responding to um, not a personal agenda of, uh, or personal agendas of the Board of Selectmen, but looking at what is needed in town based on what we're hearing from townspeople. Um, I think that the institution of a town manager obviously was a necessary thing given the growth in town. Um, I think Norman is an incredibly intelligent, capable, um, wonderful person. I like him personally. Um, and I think he has to be very careful when he expresses himself because he doesn't want to sway, you know, go on one side or the other. He does have to put the policies into effect. He is the implementer of the policies that the Board of Selectmen set for the town. All right, Mr. Tedstow. Well, I believe that the boards will, I mean, we've elected some pretty capable people on all the boards. So the boards will do their thing, come up with their proposal, and submit those to the town manager. The town manager then takes a look at them, puts it to the board of selectmen. The selectmen will take a look at it and decide if that's the way they want to go, if it's not the way we, they want to go. So it's important for the chain of command to stay crystal clear and not black and white. I mean, yes, black and white, not gray. So whoever reports to whomever will take the information and, yeah, I think that the town manager is a, 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 an intelligent man and, and he's doing a good job at what he does. What I'm thinking is once the, um, I don't like the micromanaging that, that, that happens and I'm not saying that it happens in Hopkinton. What I'm saying is with the, with the um, you know, let the boards do their thing, submit it to us, to, to town manager, town manager to us, we'll take a look at it and make our final decision and we'll go from there. Okay, I have one follow-up, it's just a yes or a no, so it's quick. Um, 
Claire mentioned that you know the town charter changed everything in 2006. We talked about the responsibilities. Has Hopkinton successfully transitioned fully to what is written in the charter? We'll Policy making versus administration. Yes or no? We'll go left to right. Mr. Ted Stowe. So you're just looking for one word? Yes. Yes. Pretty good. <laughs> They're working at it. That's an <laughs> unqualified yes. Okay. Based on the previous charter or the no, no, the current charter, current. the one we have now says one is policy, one is admin, and that's where we're supposed to be. Did we get there? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Okay. Our next question uh, will be asked by Amy. Mr. Yumino will answer first. Okay. So as a selectman, you are responsible in consultation with the town manager for issuing a budget policy statement that establishes general guidelines for the town budget. So please describe the issues that will be most important to you when making this budget rec recommendation. When you make a budget recommendation, you have to pick the largest item first. The largest item is the school. And so that is obviously the most important. Uh, after the school budget was uh, was agreed to by the town meeting, there was what about uh, ten little little uh, more than ten percent was what was left afterwards. So um, the schools are the things we have to concentrate on, and by doing so, and I've been saying this, I said it at town meeting, we really need to conquer the traffic and the bus issues, and I think that <clears throat> if we concentrate on those. I think that we can find money to do that and to, to uh, help reduce the traffic by having the uh, school buses pick up all of the children so that we don't have a thousand round trips a day, half in the morning, half at night, clogging up all the traffic. People can't get to work. People are complaining everywhere, and yet nothing has been done. And we pride ourselves on the great services that we provide, and that issue has been left out, and it needs to be fixed. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Wiggin. Uh, I also feel that the schools, obviously, that's the big budget item right now. Um, so I think the schools would be the first thing I would look at or that the policy, the budget policy statement would look at. Um, then I think infrastructure. So roads, um, I've noticed many of our roads are not in good condition. Um, I'm not sure why they're not in great condition and other things are being focused on. Um, the library is a wonderful initiative to have, but I would like to see the roads um, working well for all the traffic and all the additional traffic. Um, so I would say schools, roads, infrastructure, and then things like, to me, which would be, um, I guess you'd have to do safety of public structures like buildings, schools, um, so make sure there's safety. Okay, Mr. Tedstow. Well, with the budget recommendations, we have to do the want versus need. Um, you know, do we want, you know, do we want to maintain our level of great schools, great DPW, great highway, I mean, um, police and fire? And if we do so, there's going to be a cost associated with that. Do you want to let that? Do, do we want to keep being taxed and, and maintain that? Is that going to be a huge priority for us, which I think should be? Or do we let things kind of stay status quo or almost decline and keep the tax rate really low without tightening the belt? Um, you know, unfortunately, there's going to be some pretty tough um, decisions to be made moving forward. And, and um, I think that, uh, that I know I, personally, I feel like we really do need to focus on the schools, the DPW, fire and uh, police and um, maybe tighten our belt okay miss Wright. well we're certainly going to need to look for level services um, we need to maintain our strong schools but the days when we can just keep spending and spending are over um, we need to hang on to that tax rate and not let our spending get out of control but we spent a lot of money in the last year and that is going to be coming home to us and so um, additional taxation is, is just not going to be an option for us so we need to keep those taxes down and I would also say that I would like to see the selectmen um, update budget for and implement a strong capital asset management plan so that 
the new facilities we're building will be cared for and many of the ones that we funded 15 or 20 years ago that are beginning to age will be cared for. We can't do deferred maintenance. It'll end up costing us more in the future and when times are tight, that's the hardest time to make those investments. So we need to plan on it and commit to it for the long run. All right, Michelle, I believe you had a follow-up. I have one follow-up. I'm gonna pull one of my uh, Yes, no, one word from the end, because I think it's more relevant here. Um, when the budget policy statement is issued every year, it usually starts with level funding or level services. So the question is, um, do you lean level services or level funding as a base point for starting the budget process? Well, ideally, it would be level services, but if it's, I mean, level funding, but if it's a one word answer, it's, I would say tend to lean towards level services. Okay. Yes. Level services. I would also have to agree with that, level services. I need to clarify the question because I thought I understood and then I just got confused. Okay. So you're saying, would we prefer to have level funding or level services? Correct. Okay. I would like to have level funding. Okay. Okay, I have the next question. The town's vision statement states, Hopkinton is a vibrant, welcoming community, centrally located in New England and nestled 26.2 miles west of Boston. We are endowed with open space, natural resources, facilities, and programs that promote a well-educated and healthy community. We are respectful of our past, engaged in our present, and actively preparing for our future. How will you attempt to achieve the goals outlined in this vision? We'll start off with Ms. Wiggin. Thank you. Um, I love that vision. That is why I'm here. Um, I want to continue the resources, schools, um, community feeling that we have here that we've had. Um, I believe we can do this. I think it is going to take an effort because we have increased our population, we have increased our development, we have had some serious changes. Um, I was looking at the the things um, that were approved of uh, by the planning board even in the past two years, so many things, 2014, 2015, um, were approved of. So I think we have to be very careful. I, I Part of my studying will be looking at what happened to, to have um, brought us to this point and, and make sure that doesn't happen again. Okay, Mr. Tedstow. With the vision statement, I think that, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with what the vision statement stands for more. I think it's a great vision statement. I think that that vision statement should be posted in all our town buildings. Um, and it's something that we should, we should stick to. But there are a lot of projects to make Hopkinton attractive that we can do that's not going to cost a ton of money that is going to make Hopkinton attractive. I, I want to bring in the right businesses. The business, you know, if you can bring in the right businesses to the right spots, you're not going to involve any more, like, you're not going to have any more kids in the school. So it's not going to create any more um, infrastructure uh, burden more, you know you might need a, more cops or police but you need to get you need to follow that vision statement there, there were some pretty qualified people that put together that vision statement and follow it and, and uh, keep to it post it in all the buildings okay miss Wright the vision statement is aspirational it's a vision for the year 2025 and um, you may not know this but the planning board in redoing its master plan um, <coughs> has taken each of those aspirational statements in the vision statement and shown what goals we can we can look for to achieve that. And in so many of the initiatives that come from the Board of Selectmen, we can, we can um, carry out those goals, whether it's providing infrastructure and services to encourage economic development, um, working to maintain our small town character, providing sidewalks, walkability, um, keeping Hopkinton a town that is affordable for a diverse population to live in, creating a safe community. Many of the um, Board of Selectmen's initiatives can be focused 
um, on the goals of the vision statement to make Hopkinton continue to be a place that people want to live and work in. Okay, Mr. Yumina. My thought on that is that no matter what the vision statement, if you can't pay for it, you're not going to have it. And I think that uh, the only way to do that is we're going to have to uh, make the town be more fiscally stable. Uh, everybody wants to have the town that they live in be one of these fuzzy little um, homey little towns and um, that has excellent services. And then they open up their mail one day and their tax bill comes and you can probably hear the groan all the way across town. So my thought on the matter is that the only way to keep things running uh, and keep things stable is we're going to have to increase the revenue stream. And in order to prevent that from being a higher tax bill on the residents, which I would love to see go down, uh, the only way that I think we can do that is to bring more commercial properties into this town. We may not want to. We may have to be very careful where they're placed, but they're going to have to come or the town is going to run out of money. There goes the vision statement. Okay. Michelle has our next question. Mr. Ted Stone will answer first. Okay. This sort of continues what we've been talking about. Um, at this year's annual town meeting, Selectman Chair Ben Palaco uh, said that, Hop in his opinion, and, and presumably the boards, but I think he was speaking more for himself, Hoppington will always have roughly you know, an 80% residential tax base and that business development is not a panacea for high tax growth. So he's saying you know, more commercial de or development is not always the answer. And what we've heard repeatedly is that we need an increased revenue stream. Um, what do you propose as a solution? Well, I think it's important. <coughs> I mean, before you answer, I'm going to say one thing to you. And I want to also know if you agree with Ben's statement and then go to what you would propose. Well, Ben is a CFO, and uh, far be it from me, who's a nurse, to question his financial uh, data. He seems to be pretty astute when it comes to that. Um, but we, it's, it's, uh, I think it's important to keep legacy farms their, um, the concept that they were going to keep us, keep everything as tax positive moving forward. If they're tax positive and they put 25,000 kids down in that development and we need six schools because of that, then it should by all rights be covered by the tax money that's coming in. So it's important to keep those promises, keep people's feet to the fire on those promises. So, um, but this, that said, I don't want a Marlboro, I want a Hopkinton. I don't want any other, any, I don't want to have 75,000 people here in 20 strip malls. I want to keep it as quaint as possible while keeping our services as, as uh, solid as they are. Okay, Ms. Wigan. Thank you. I too heard that statement by Mr. Paleko and I was glad to hear that because I think it identified for me where we needed to focus. Um, I think that um, places like the Irvine Todaro property, which could be a revenue positive location depending on what goes in there, we already have that property. Um, I think if we look at the fact that EMC is a huge source of our um, tax revenue we need to make sure that we that that can somehow be maintained in its transfer to a Dell ownership um, and then legacy apartments and star LLG you know the the natural gas those are all revenue sources so I think that working with the revenue sources that we have and finding similar revenue sources as opposed to getting more commercial um, I think we need to be creative in our problem-solving approach. Okay, Mr. Yumino. Great. I, uh, I would love to see that 80-20 statement uh, be the norm in Hopkinton. That would be an ideal situation. But I think there are ways around that that would be less offensive to the people as, as a, a whole because I know that some towns will put their uh, commercial places in the outside edges of the town or in places that are um, 
uh, you know, out of the way of where most of the residents go. And that's what South Street has kind of become. It's, it was a great location because it has 495 entrances right there. But I think we could do a little more near some of the borders of our town. And uh, we, we kind of have to increase that. I mean, we've got school buses to pay for. We've got an ever-increasing school budget to pay for. We have uh, roads now that really need to be worked on. And with the price of oil down much lower than it has been in a long time, this is the ideal time to fix those roads. And we've got to pay for it somehow. Okay, Ms. Wright? Well, I think Ben is probably right, and I really appreciate his candor. Um, but, you know, just because one answer is not the silver bullet, the universal panacea, doesn't mean you don't try to do that. You don't, you don't look for just one answer. Most problems are multifaceted, and they have multifaceted solutions. And we still should encourage good, responsible business development that's targeted in the right areas of town. Um, that doesn't require a lot of town services. At the same time, there are other um, other aspects of the town that, depending on how the town develops, influences how much it costs us. When the Legacy Farms development came in, the planning board and the town as a whole looked very carefully at the types of units, the types of revenue it would produce or would draw from the town, and they were determined to be revenue positive, which they have been, including other proposals for that Osmo development. So, um, you know, how we build our financial house includes a mixture, but, um, you know, we should look at all contributors. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, this question is from Amy. Ms. Wright will answer first. Do you think the town hall does a good job communicating important issues to the citizens of Hopkinton? And if yes, what is an example? And if not, what would you do differently if you were elected selectman? Well, as I said in my opening statement, I think there is room for improvement. Um, sometimes, you know, we don't have a clear window as to how we're being perceived. Um, I, I think they probably feel they're doing a good job, but in the last year or so, there's been a, going out on the campaign trail, talking to people, I've heard a lot of feedback that there needs to be more either transparency or public responsiveness. Um, right now, the public input section that they have in the Board of Selectmen's meetings is very good, but um, particularly on things like the budget. And I know that that is, um, the policy is set by the Board of Selectmen and then it's negotiated between the town manager and the different department heads with input from the finance director. But people feel they want to have more of a look at the budget than it being presented in one big lump on town meeting floor. Um, and pulling it apart on town meeting floor is not an appropriate time. So that's something where perhaps that budgeting process, if it could be um, started a little earlier and have budget workshops so that people can have input or be be heard at every level. Um, I think there is room for improvement in the public uh, in the public communication uh, area. Okay, Mr. Yumino. Um, I do really believe that the town needs to uh, spend some time and and some small amount of money. I hope uh, on a management information system that will help the town to be able to access us uh, during selectman meetings. Because I have seen so many organizations out there now who are using this, uh, you can send an, inst an instant message or a text or an email to a meeting while it's in session. And that would not require very much of a change to be able to do that. We would just have to maintain a website so that when town meetings are in session and they're being carried live like this one is, that uh, we can have a way for the people who are in the town to give their opinions and their feedback to what's going on, ask questions. And uh, I think you would see that most of the people in this town are way too busy to have to attend all of these meetings that go on. There's nobody who could attend them all because they, they intermesh with each other. But if we have a, a better communication system run that way, that any meeting that goes on in the town hall can be accessed by the voters, we may get some good ideas from them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Wigan. Yes, I, uh, I agree that communication from town hall should be better. I think more transparent. 
uh, I believe it was Mrs. Dietz who stood at town meeting and asked to have a breakdown of the budget. Um, so one idea I had and I would love to see implemented is to have paper um, available if people wanted to look at the breakdown of what each budget decision was. I also think that there should be you know, some kind of communication about major issues that are happening at town hall. Um, I was just at the uh, Youth Commission meeting this evening, and um, one idea we had for them, which I believe would be great for a town hall, is to have a little brochure pamphlet just saying what are upcoming activities, what events are happening in town. I know they have the big notebook right by the town clerk's office with all of the meetings, but people don't have access to that. Um, well, they may have some access, but I think better access to what's happening in town and the issues that are before um, the town manager and the board of selectmen would be a good thing. Okay, Mr. Tedstone. I think they do a fair job with, uh, with with maintaining the website, and but with today's technology, having uh, Twitter and, and Instagram and Facebook, there's no reason you can't put a you know a tweet out there and say, today we're talking about the CVS um, debacle coming into town and and. Let's uh, let's get your tweets. Let me know what you feel about that. Or we're talking about the fire chief. Or we're talking about whatever the high school band uniforms. Um, but if you throw out the tweets like that, everyone's got it. Everyone's got a phone. They carry it. I can tell you what how many strikes Dustin Pedroia has in a second during a game uh, while I'm at work. Um, everyone has access to that. So th I think it's just, it's very simple. Just embrace that and uh, and build on it. I'm sure that the IT people they must know how to do it. All right, uh, Michelle has our next question. Mr. Yumina will answer first. Okay, next question is regarding economic development, what role, if any, should the board have? The Board of Selectmen have in, in uh, economic development. Well, I guess the Board of Selectmen is supposed to be uh, helping to achieve that goal. I think it's a very important goal. I think the Board of Selectmen should be trying to encourage that at this point uh, to have economic development increase in the town. That's what I've been saying all evening. I really do think we need more revenue coming into the town without adding additional tax burden onto the residents of the town. And uh, when I was collecting my signatures to uh, on my nomination papers, more than half of the people there told me we want our services but we're choking on the taxes. We want our services, but we're choking on the taxes. So if you want to have your cake and eat it too, the only thing you can do is to guide the town very carefully about where and how you add to that revenue stream and make sure that most of the people in the town, this is a democracy, will agree with what the board is doing. And we have to do that by putting out ideas and making them work. Thank you. All right, Ms. Wright. Um, there's lots of things the Board of Selectmen can do. Um, for starts, the type of in infrastructure that they um, initiate, whether it's roadways, water services, sewer services, all impact the kind of economic development we can have. The Board of Selectmen can pursue grant funding, whether specifically to Hopkinton or regional, such as the, the uh, MassWorks grant that we got to partner with Legacy Farms for the $6 million to complete the North Road. Um, there's a Hopkinton 2020 economic development collaboration that was initiated about five years ago with the Chamber of Commerce to coordinate with the Chamber to understand and respond to the needs of businesses to attract them and keep them in Hopkinton. Um, we want to keep our tax rate at a single tax rate that encourages business growth and also collaboration in regional organizations such as MAPC. Uh, I've recently been named Hopkinton's representative to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Uh, 495 Metro West Partnership, Borough's Economic Development Initiative to look at our issues from a regional standpoint and work together to encourage growth. Okay. Mr. Tedstow. Well, I think that there's a, a misnomer out there that the selectmen are the end-all, be-all for everywhere, everyone, but there's planning, there's zone, like in order for, for a if Walmart wanted to go on Price Street, it has to go through zoning, it has to go through planning, and everyone, 
everyone has to put their stamp on it before it gets to, to us, to the selectmen, to make their decision. So we need to be transparent and work with the zoning, work with, with planning, work with all these other boards to make sure that we're all on the same page and we're all moving forward and we all have the same vision to move forward to keep Hopkinton as it is. Okay, Ms. Wigan. Um, I agree. I, I think that the Board of Selectmen should set the policy and determine what type of growth. So obviously encourage proposals for um, economic development that would come into town. I'm not sure we would be responsible for deciding which ones to initiate, but we would determine which ones would actually tra you know, transpire. Um, the other thing um, in terms of what I meant by level funding is I, don't, I would like to see the services not go down, but I think they could go up whereas I would like to see the funding stay level and not um, increase. Um, I think that there are ways to encourage the planning board, the zoning, all of those other um, entities. If we told them this is our vision, this is what kind of economic development we'd like to see, this is the direction we'd like to see as policymakers, then they would come to us with our, their proposals and then we would decide based on what is presented to us. Okay. Michelle has our next question as well. <laughs> Mr. Ted Stone will answer first. I'm on a roll. Okay. Um, this, this actually goes directly to a, something that you said at a previous meeting. Um, you're not the only candidate that's expressed this type of view, but you would like to. It goes along with preserving the town's small you know, character and to bring Hoppington back to the way it used to be. The question is, is this your goal and if so can you provide some specifics about it and, and how does it fit with the Hoppington of today well I don't think there's a way to bring the town back to the way it was when I was a kid um, I don't I don't think that it would it's it's possible um, I guess there's a politician that says uh, you know make America great again uh, my thought is keep Hopkinton great I think Hopkinton is great uh, just the fact that I live here makes me show that I think that Hopkinton's great. There's a ton of great stuff. The, the schools get accolades all the time for being such a great school system. The fire department, the police department. I believe we were, we were voted the fourth uh, safest town to live in in the state recently. Uh, that's nothing to shake a stick at, especially I have two kids. I have a seven and a five-year-old kid. So moving forward, I want to keep Hopkinton as great as it is. I, I want to be able to have them go through this great school system and safely get there, and, and, and uh, that's it. Okay. Ms. Wiggett. Thank you. Um, I feel the same way um, that I, I think if we can keep Hopkinton, the wonderful, charming, I've, I'm repeating the same thing over and over again because I feel so strongly about this. How do we do this? I would like to make sure that new residents, because there are so many, have a way of um, getting together, you know, so welcoming everyone and having a big Hopkinton something, whether or not fireworks, because that's a party, but, you know, getting people to know to each other in terms of community building. Um, and I also believe that our, we are blessed with wonderful police, fire, DPW people. Um, I, I think that our town is unique in that, um, and I would like to see that continue. So I would like to encourage um, those public workers um, to continue to feel honored by the town in some way. Okay, Ms. Wright. Well, obviously you can't turn back the clock, but you know, a lot of those small town qualities that uh, Brendan had when he was a boy, uh, they're still here. And we are doing positive things to encourage those, whether it's walkability, sidewalks, encouraging small businesses looking to revitalize our downtown um, with the library expansion. That will go a long ways towards a, a vibrant 
town center. Um, a couple of years ago, the townspeople made a decision that they did not want districted schools, that we wanted all our kids to go to school together and know each other and not be segmented into different segments of the population. Um, we've done wonderful things with open space, with trails, with preserving our historic resources. Um, these are all factors that build a sense of community. And for people that want to ha hang on to that small town character, I would also say you do your part. Be a joiner. It's all too easy nowadays to go into your house and shut the door and go behind your computer. Participate. Volunteer for boards. Become a part of the community. It's not just government that does this. It's the citizens as well. Okay. Mr. Yumino. Okay. Just a couple of things. Um, when Legacy Farms came to town, their uh, promise was that they were going to have enough commercial land present in their development that would allow for the people who live there to have a place to go and that would also bring in a, you know, a commercial uh, revenue stream and taxes that would not uh, involve having more children in the schools. And then all of a sudden, some of that changed, and a lot of the commercial property went out of that place, and 500 more units were added and um, because they make more money for the developer. And so that was a promise kind of broken down the drain. Um, and I don't think we should be allowing that in the town. And because my idea of this is what used to be in the neighborhoods when I was a little boy and I used to go around collecting uh, bottles and cans and getting two cents at the drugstore. We had a corner drugstore. We had a, a, a market that was uh, that everybody could walk to in our little neighborhood there. And we lived in Newton, which is not a small town. So that's the kind of thing we have to work towards, small group, you know, entities. I need to correct that. 500 units were not added. Oops. That is incorrect. Okay. Well, moving on to the next question, Amy has this question, and Ms. Wigan will answer first. Okay. Do you think there has been too much turnover of staff at Town Hall in recent years, and what do you think are the causes, and what should the Board of Selectmen do to influence the hiring and retaining of employees? I think that the turnover of staff um, probably is influenced by individual reasons. I think Maureen Duenell had been there a long time, and she was... She timed out. I think uh, Jerry Holland had some other reasons why she decided not to continue with her position. Um, I know that Jean Vaza, who was youth services uh, coordinator, um, had just had disagreements on how things should be carried forward. So I think there are, I don't think it's that everyone's bailing um, because there's anything wrong in particular. I think that these are individual situations all happening at the same time. I do believe that the Board of Selectmen should be able to support the uh, employees at Town Hall. I think there should be an, an open chain of communication um, for any employee that feels that things aren't going well um, for whatever reason in their employment at Town Hall. Mr. Yumino? Okay, when, uh, when employees are unhappy, uh, one of two things usually happens. They either leave or they start a union. And I think we saw that happen uh, with our schools and unions came about because a lot of the people were unhappy with things that went on and they deal now with a grievance uh, process that allows somebody who has a problem rather than just to pack up and go to have a meeting and discuss these type of things and try to come up with a solution that everybody can live with. And that's the type of system that seems to work, even though I'm not, uh, you know, a, a unionist per se. Um, I do think that those type of things in management could be established as a pattern for them to use, and it might result in better retention of our uh, workers in the town hall and anywhere else in town. Okay, Ms. Wright. Um, this certainly has been a hot topic around town. Um, I certainly know that we've had a number of employees all in a similar age range that one could say have aged off at the same time, reached retirement age at a similar time. Um, it's also, uh, if we hire good employees, it's not unusual for people to want to better, better themselves and move upwards. And if they are they find employment in another community because of their high caliber, that is 
a compliment to us in a way that we have found quality people, um, and that is a natural part of the advancement process. But beyond those two factors, you get into the rumors and the innuendo that have been going around town. Um, I don't know any more than the next person, and honestly, I don't think it's the right forum to be discussing it. Okay, Mr. Ted Stone. Well, I think that I think that the some of the innuendo that Claire was speaking about. There was a letter that went on one of the websites about a, an employee that left, and it was a pretty scathing letter about the town hall. So, I know that the charter precludes the board of selectmen from you know, doing the day-to-day -day stuff with, you know, like being completely involved in the day-to-day -day operations. But yeah, there's some, there's some really good people that, that have left the town. And, and yeah, Maureen was, it was, uh, she was ready to retire, but there are some really good people that have left the town. And I think we should do a pretty comprehensive exit interview. And I know that that one letter, that woman just flat out she was so frustrated with uh, town manager and and how everything was going that she flat out refused the exit interview because she thought it wasn't going to go anywhere. But I think it's very important to, to find out about why these people are leaving. And if they do want to go to another place to better themselves, why can't they better themselves here? Why, if, if we've put the time and, and effort into training them and getting them rolling and they're great employees, well, let's keep them and let's figure out how to keep them and, and make them so they want to feel wanted and be part of the town hall. Okay, uh, Amy has the next question. Ms. Wright will answer first. Okay. What is your opinion on the public comment period at the beginning of each Board of Selectmen meeting? Is it sufficient to allow input from residents, and would you change any aspects of it? I think it's a good thing that we have it. Um, some nights there's very little, some nights there's a lot. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think that there is a need right now for greater communication between the public and the Board of Selectmen. So whether their agendas are set up in such a way to allow a longer piece of time, I know they have a lot of work to accomplish at each meeting, um, but um, I would like to make sure that the public has adequate input. Um, I also, on a very practical level, I would like some improvements in the sound system because I can't hear the discussion when I'm sitting in the hall and I can't hear half the discussions when you're watching home on TV and that in itself makes people feel disconnected from the Board of Selectmen. So I think we should look at some of the comments that were brought up tonight. I think we should look at every single aspect of how to make people feel more connected and our government seem more transparent. Okay, Mr. Ted Stone. Well, thanks, Claire. You kind of stole everything I was going to say. Um, yeah, I feel the exact same way. Um, with, with the exception of, and I, I keep reverting back to these two hot button uh, issues that we've had recently with the, with the town, with the selectmen. Um, the CVS, there was a lot of input on the CVS. The fire chief uh, hiring. Um, there was a lot of that. If you're going to know, if you know that there's going to be a lot of people coming up and discuss that, then maybe the 15 minutes that you're allotted, maybe you should push back to half an hour, 45 minutes, or even an hour, uh, so you're not under the gun all night long for everything and set the agenda moving forward. I think it's very important to have that. The townspeople need to have a voice, and um, and to let us as selectmen know where they're what they're feeling and uh, we can't act as a as a board for the majority if we don't know what the majority is saying okay mr Yumino. well i think it's already been asked and answered about better communication with the selectmen and with all the other boards in the town everybody seems to feel that that's a common issue and problem uh, maybe what we need to do is encourage people to uh, we tell them when the meetings are going to be and then say to them this is when the meeting is going to be. If you have a statement that you'd like to make, send it to us because it's much faster for us to read them than it is to be on the phone and listen to somebody go on for half an hour when you can read it in two minutes, the same amount of words that they will say. And so that would condense some of this time and allow more input. And we really do have to push our ability to communicate with everybody in the town as much as they want to communicate, communicate with us and as much as we want to communicate with them. It's supposed to be transparent government that we have and not held 
at oddball times when everybody's got sick children and it's time to make dinner and nobody can get out and come to these meetings and um, whereas if they knew what was on the agenda and were allowed to send us emails in a pile and we'll open them and read them and try to make it quick thank you okay miss wiggin thank you um, I think it's very important to have that initial time for the public to speak and I agree with um, all the statements that have been made actually I think if there's a way to um, I don't know what you would do take a ticket make a reservation somehow to let the Board of Selectmen know that you ha have something you want to speak about so they could allot that amount of time because I would like to see everyone who has something to say be allowed to speak um, and I understand there are other issues that are at before the board but I I think everyone should feel if this is how we do our government that everyone should be a part of that decision um, I agree with the mic situation what I observed is that the lapel mics are terrible and the stationary mics seem to work well so I'm not sure why the board of selectmen couldn't have a stationary mic um, that seems to be a clearer sound um, so I'd like to see us be flexible with the time that we have so that everyone felt that they would be able to speak Okay, the next question is from me. In addition to attending Board of Selectmen meetings, what other community events would you plan to attend if elected and why? We'll start off with Mr. Human. Well, uh, obviously, uh, the school committee is a very important place to start uh, because it's a very big deal in this town. It spends more money than any other, any other group and it also has more influence on our children as they grow up. But I'm kind of partial to uh, knowing what's going on with the fire department and the police department. I have uh, cousins who are police officers and detectives and um, you know that has always interest me, interested me because my, great, my grandfather was uh, a policeman in Newton till his death. And uh, I, I just I like information. I like talking to people. I like know <clears throat> I like knowing what they have to say and what they have to tell us. And you can always get information out of people, and that's where ideas come from. When you mix it up with as many people as you can, and they are willing to say what's on their mind because they trust you're not gonna uh, you know come back at them with a hammer or something. And if you are understanding and let them do that, that's what makes good government. Okay, Mr. Ted Stone. I need you to repeat the question. Sure. Uh, in addition to attending Board of Selectmen meetings, if elected. Okay, yeah, I got it, I got it. Yeah, all right. So there are, um, there's a, uh, a spreadsheet that everyone's kind of assigned to certain groups, uh, police, fire, DPW, the advisories, uh, planning board. So you know I went and I, I went to the veterans breakfast um, Friday that's a great that's a, a better than great it's an outstanding group of men and women that I would love to be involved with and and help out with that committee um, I have a feeling that when we become selectmen we're kind of assigned the uh, the, the groups that we that we go work at um, but you know, keeping your, your finger on the pulse of the town, uh, I love going to those retirement parties. I love going to, to uh, awards banquets. Uh, the Eagle Scout things were great. All those things are great. And, uh, but you know, the, the, uh, I love the veterans. I love doing stuff like that with them. And, and I hold them in very, very high, high regard. And it would be an honor to be able to work with them as well as some of the other groups. Okay, Ms. Wiggin. Thank you. Um, at the risk of sounding naive I would love to go to everything I I would love to go to any event that anyone is having in town um, if it costs money I'd love it if I didn't have to pay the entry fee but uh, I really part of what I love about this town is being a, a part of this town um, so if there's a kid activity Timlin you know race um, Carnival on the Common. I'd love to be involved in the kid activities. I'd love to be involved in the veterans activities and the senior activities. All, everything that's going on. I'm one person, but I have a lot of energy. So I would love to be able to do whatever it is that came before me. In terms of the boards, um, again, I, I have been to, more recently been to design review, um, plan review a meeting. Fascinating. 
um, planning board, zoning, I'd like to know it all and do it all as much as is humanly possible. Okay, Ms. Wright. Um, the Board of Selectmen has certain liaison assignments, committees that they're supposed to be liaison to, and I certainly would like to see more participation in actually attending those meetings so that the boards understand that there's an interest and the the selectmen understand how these boards operate. Um, I think that sort of friend in court relationship could be strengthened. But as far as community uh, organizations, you know, I hate to see it just assigned and you feel like you go just because this was your assignment. Um, there's just been a feeling out there of a disconnect between the selectmen. And I think knowing that, um, selectmen should just make every effort to attend what they can, when they can. They're all busy, they all have families, but you know, the message is out there now that the community feels there need to be more needs to be more connection. I am very involved in historic preservation activities. I've done many things on my own initiative. I can't remember when I saw a selectman at one of our meetings. That sends a strong message, and that needs to stop. I think we can all just do a better job um, of being actively engaged. Okay, we have. Uh Time for one final question in our question and response segment. Uh, Mr. Ted Stone will answer first. Amy has the question. Okay. Hopkinton is one of only 16 towns out of 351 municipalities in the Commonwealth with partisan town elections, so that's about less than 5% of municipalities. How do you feel this affects local politics, and do you think this is good or bad? I think it's good. It's what's made Hopkinton Hopkinton, and I think it's what could make it better is if more people could get out and vote more people could uh, take more of an initiative and and, uh, and um, go to town meeting, get out, register, get out, and actually vote. Not just register to vote, but actually vote. Um, you know, we have 16,000 or so people in town, I think 9,000 residents, and, and in speaking with the town clerk the other day, she, she assumes that she, it's going to be about a 20% um, people that, that come out to vote. And, you know, that it's... And when you look at town meeting, when you see the um, the moderator in the 10 minutes before it starts on the second day counting to make sure we have 100 people in there, and they're the people that are spending the money, and it's the same people every time. It's the human wise mantle, these people that get up and talk and talk and talk. But, and that's it. That, those are the people that, and they're the, these guys are the ones that are setting the policy. And, uh, and uh, you know, Let's uh, let's let's infuse some some more people. All right. No um, offense. Well, kind of no offense. Miss <laughs> Wigan. <laughs> I appreciate what Mr. Wisemantle and Mr. Yumina have to say. Actually, um, so in terms of partisan town elections, um, I'm not a politician. I I just want to help the town. So I don't know how else you would do it. Um, in order to find qualified people and the people that the town would like to put into those positions. Um, I personally don't, you know, I think if, if my sign is in a yard with someone else's sign and they're in a different party, it doesn't make any difference to me. A top party doesn't make a difference to me. I'm trying to do the right thing for the town. And um, when I vote, I don't vote all in one party because it may not be the right person. So that's how I feel. Okay, Ms. Wright. I wouldn't want it to change from the way it is. Um, it does help with candidate recruitment. Um, if you are with a particular party, they help with the actual campaign, which is very valuable. But, you know, so many of our issues in town are not necessarily partisan issues. However, uh, what the goal always is is an informed electorate. But too often, people are not well informed. The voters don't know the issues, they don't know the candidates. At least when you go to the polls, the party a person represents may tell you something about that individual, and you're not voting because, oh, her name is Jennifer, I've always loved that name, that's my granddaughter's name. It does help with voter information. Okay, Mr. Yumino. One thing I've noticed about Hopkinton after living here for uh, about 53 years is that Hopkinton is a very independent town. People here want to be, uh, what's the word, managers are in control of their own destiny. And that's one thing that I really appreciate about this town because 
if you just let go of government and you let everybody else do it, then you're going to have to live with what everybody else does. And since everybody else in this town, if you saw our last town meeting was what, about 150 people were there. And, um, and I got to tell you, Brendan, that uh, I may talk a lot of town meeting. I don't know how much they listen to me. <laughs> so, but uh, hopefully they'll, they will understand the points that I bring up, which I feel are important to the town. Um, and this bit about Hopkinton being one of the few communities that votes because of this independence, I think that's a great thing. And I think that most of the other communities around ought to go our way instead of the way that they have gone. Because I've lived in, when I was a young kid, I lived in Newton and everybody complained. Of course, they complain here too, but okay. I think it's important. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, it's now time for the yes or no question portion. Uh, Michelle has the questions. We'll keep it simple. We'll go left to right on the responses. Okay, and this is just to get an idea where people stand on certain issues. Uh, do you support an appointed or elected town clerk? Elected. Appointed. Elected. I can't say both. Um, <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> elected. Okay, thank you. All right, let's see. Uh, do you support single stream recycling? Yes, yes or no? <laughs> I don't think that lends itself to a yes or no answer because I think there's a problem with the delivery service. Okay. I agree, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, do you agree with the recent changes to the liquor license operating hours? Well, I was, oh, one word, um, no. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm not familiar with it, so I'll have to say I don't know. Okay. I'll say yes. Okay. Um, what else do we have on here? Do you support the Main Street Corridor Project, which includes realignment of the Main Street Route 85 intersection, undergrounding of utilities, and really just overall improvement for the downtown traffic? Yes, but it's a want versus need. It's okay. low on the priority, but yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Yes, low priority. Okay. Does it mean no parking spaces are available? Um, I'll say yes if there's parking. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, Since uh, we're going to go to uh, CVS was a very divisive issue in town over the last year. Uh, this one you can have three choices. Were you pro-CVS, anti-CVS, or neutral? You're giving me one quick one word <laughs> answer on that? Well, yes, because I think, I mean, it can be viewed as... It ties back to the question of does the Board of Selectmen play a role you support economic development, you encourage business, but do they have a role in selecting a particular business? And that's sort of brought out. So that's why I want to know, were you pro, anti, or neutral? I was pro CVS. Okay. But if there was a, uh, a no price chopper movement, as there was a no CVS, then we wouldn't have had a CVS issue because Colella's would still be in business. Mm -hmm. One and that's word. more than one word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Michelle, this doesn't lend itself to a pro and anti answer. Um, the issue is a private property rights issue. I was sorry to see CVS come in, but they were within their rights. Okay. Ditto. Okay. So I would have to say neutral because I could see both sides, but again, I didn't feel it was my decision. Okay. Got a couple more. We have, we have time. Sure, squeeze them in. Okay, so um, these are easy ones. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, keep them going. <laughs> um, th this goes back to one that was somewhat asked before, but I just wanted to clarify. When we asked about selectmen at community events, a lot of people talked about liaisons. But what I want to know is, is it important for selectmen to participate and be seen at community events in general? Yes Absolute, or no? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Yes, as I answered before. Okay. All right. Now, now I've got a harder one. All right. Maybe. Do you know what Hoppington's current tax rate is? Everyone says it's too high, it's too much. Yes. How much is it? That's not a yes or no. That's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I should say yes and then tell you what it is. 
Uh, yes, okay. Do you know what it is? And I believe it's $17.02 per right. thousand. Well, so we answered. Yeah, so. we what all. That? Now we got the answer. Okay, he did know that. Yes, we all knew that. I knew okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> I paid taxes. All right. right. Um, we had two more in here related to town meeting votes. Did you support um, the zoning article that limited future condo development in town? Yes or no? Did I support the article that limited it? Yes. Yes. Yes? Absolutely. Um, I believe it was unanimous by vote. I didn't really agree with it, but it's probably for the best. Yes. Okay. And I think that's about it, really. All right. Terrific. That wraps up our question segment. Each candidate now has one minute for a closing statement. We will start with Mr. Ted Stone. Well, thank you very much for having this, uh, this debate. This was great. It's good to have all of us in the same room and throwing our ideas out. Um, I am very, very humbly asking everyone for their vote next week. Um, it would mean a lot to me to be able to guide this town uh, moving forward and uh, make uh, keep Hopkinton rolling in the same direction it's rolling, keeping it great, and uh, just with uh, you know it, with my with my family's history in town, it would mean a lot to be able to be that guy up there and and, uh, and kind of do the family proud and, and uh, keep the keep the town rolling. Nice, yes. oh. Miss Wright. The Board of Selectmen is a serious position with serious and consequential responsibilities. It's the chief executive office of the town. It's our highest position and it requires experience, knowledge of how town government operates, and demonstrated commitment. Working my way up through hundreds of years of hundreds of years feels like hundreds of years, hundreds of hours on town boards. I I feel that I have earned what is needed to serve in this position, but experience isn't the only thing. As an elected representative of the citizens, your selectman needs to listen, to understand, and be responsive to the concerns of the townspeople. From the setting of policy to day-to-day -day actions, if elected, I will give my all, as I have done for years on the planning board, to hear you, respect you, and act in the best interests of the people of Hopkinton. I hope you'll find me worthy, and I ask for your vote on May 16th. All right. Mr. Yumina. Um, I would like to thank everyone uh, who is here tonight for being here, and I'd like to thank the, the uh, television audience for taking the time. I know. These meetings can get boring, and uh, you know, not that many people in the town probably even watch it. But for those of you who do, I want to congratulate you personally for taking part in your town government. Um, I remember um, that a fellow by the name of Art Linkletter used to come on TV when I was a young kid, and I used to watch his show all the time. And I really felt that when he dealt with the people, he was an honest and sincere man and when he spoke you could trust what he said I felt it as a child and that's the type of people you see sitting here this evening requesting your vote there's not a one of us that wouldn't make a good uh, an excellent uh, member of the Board of Selectmen but the truth of it is we need you to come and vote for us to make this government thing that we have in this country work Democracy works when people get involved and they come and they vote. And I would like to request your vote uh, because I promised I will do my best if you elect me. Thank you very much. All right, Ms. Wigan. Thank you. I also would like to thank everyone who's here, everyone who is watching, and especially the panel for the thoughtful questions um, which helped us to um, perhaps differentiate our points of view, but also I think there's a lot of commonality 
in our our love for the town and our our wish to do the best for the town um, my background is in business as well as education i have a master's in education i've uh, run two nonprofit companies and a large Sunday school. So I have, I feel that I have a range of experience. I've lived in Newton, actually grew up in Newton. I don't know if I was your neighbor. And uh, I lived in uh, Weston. I've lived in Brookline. So I've seen large um, cities, I've seen small towns, and I prefer small town. So I can, uh, you know, I, can, I want to maintain the small town charm, natural resources, schools, the wonderful um, elements of Hopkinton that we have now, obviously dealing with the growth that we are now presented with. I ask for your vote on May 16th. Remember, it's at the rear entrance of the uh, middle school gym. All right, thank you very much, and thank, thank you to, uh, to all of you for joining us here tonight. That will do it for tonight's contested races debate. I would like to thank our candidates for uh, joining us, as well as our in-studio and at-home viewers, the HCAM staff and crew, our panelists Michelle Murdoch and Amy Ritterbush, and everyone who helped put together tonight's debate the polls are open 7 a.m until 8 p.m monday may 16th all hopkinton precincts vote at the hopkinton middle school brown gym hcam will go live on election night when the polls close at 8 to bring you the results of the election don't forget to get out and vote we hope that this program helped get you ready for the election for all of us here at hcam i'm tom nappy thank you for watching and have a good night